Hello and welcome to session three, where we are specifically talking about Google Sites. We have returned to the same website that we have been working on previously. We have already talked about themes and we have already talked about pages. And for this session, we're gonna start off by clicking on insert located right here. If you were previously on pages or themes, you would need to scoot all the way over here to insert. I believe it usually defaults on insert. So if you have stepped away from Google Sites and you are coming back, it usually goes to this specific spot automatically. In this editing space over on the right hand side, we see what are classified as content blocks. You have the capacity to insert a content block if you feel like that is the most efficient way to organize your material. If you don't feel like you have two or three items to put into one space and you really only want to add one item, then you can simply choose one of the items that you see up here at the top. Maybe you would like to insert some text or you would like to insert an image. If you're a little bit more skilled at adding content to a website, maybe you would like to embed something or maybe there's a document from Google Drive that you would like to attach to your website. I'm gonna start things simple and I'm just going to choose text box for my very first model. I'm gonna come right over here to text box, but before I click on text box, I wanna make sure that I'm on the right page. So right now I'm on the home page. You can see that it is dark. If I were on the newsletter page, then newsletter would be bold. In addition to that, it also says newsletter right here or if I were on the contact page, contact is now bold, and then it obviously says contact at the top of the page. So before I officially click text box, let's make sure that I'm on the right page. I'm gonna scoot over to home. When I am on top of any specific section, you'll notice how the trash can duplicate and style features on the left appear or disappear. And if I have ever added a section and I'm like, oh no, I'm disappointed, I don't want that here, I can come over to the trash can to get rid of it. I'm gonna change my mind, I'm gonna leave that there for a second so that I can show you something else in just a minute. I'm gonna click text box right here. And when I do that, you'll notice how a new section has appeared. It's an independent section that's different from the last section. There's a very faint line in between the two of them. And I also know that it's another section because I can move up and down and you'll notice how the trash can, the duplicate, and the style features appear signifying that it is another section. All right, I have my Microsoft Word document open on my other screen. I modeled how I had made that in a previous session. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to paste that into this space. When I choose Control V for victory, it should paste that content into here. The other option instead of Control V for victory is that I can right click and paste. So click one time, right click, and then see how paste shows up right here? So I used Control C for copy on the text in that Microsoft Word document, and then I'm pasting over here. Please do not feel like you need a Microsoft Word document when you're designing your website. Oh no, you are more than welcome to just tic tac click away. Uh, and then you can deposit your sentences in here as they come. I just wanted to make sure that I modeled for you what it's like to bring another text box in. And the reason why I changed my mind and I left this one in here is because over here on the left hand side, you can see how those little microscopic dots are on display. When you grab those dots they act like handles and you can reorganize your material so if you put something in there and then you change your mind you're like oh I want this to be on the top I want that to be on the top you can organize them however you wish also if you want the text to be adjacent next to okay we'll call this item a and item B if you want them to be next to one another over here on the right hand side when the blue box appears you can grab the circle and you can adjust the size. You are bound and limited by these gray lines that appear. You may want to be hyper persnickety and you may want it to stop in between, kind of like where there's this negative or white space. It's not gonna let you do that. It's either going to snap to the gray line over on the right 
or it's going to snap right over here. When you're working on your website, you're not gonna see the little happy face and you're probably not gonna see the green circle over here. That's because I have a Chrome extension installed uh, and it's called Grammarly. So don't be concerned at all if you don't see those two on display right there. That's only because I have a Chrome extension. All right, let me scoot over here and then I'm going to let go. I was using my mouse. I clicked down on the left button with my mouse and then I scooted over and now I'm going to let go. And you'll notice how it snaps into that spot. I also have the capacity to scoot this one down so that it's smaller. And when I grab the perimeter, I'm gonna grab this box and you'll notice how that blue rectangle scooted with me. I can either adjust it so that it's in the middle or I can scoot it over to the right and you can see how that rectangle is traveling with me. My other option is scooting up into the other section and then letting go over here. And you'll notice how those two boxes are now adjacent to one another. Unfortunately, because the box down here now has nothing in it, Google on its own decided to get rid of that box. So if you ever evacuate all content from a section, it will just disappear. If you have decided, oops, I don't like that, I would like to go back in time. Please remember that the undo and the redo buttons are located right up here, and you can undo and redo as you see fit. I'm gonna scoot over here to the trash can so you know what it's like to get rid of something. Oops, I don't want it anymore. Let's get rid of it. So that's what that looks like. You also have the ability to use the duplicate section button located right here. So if you click it a second time, it's gonna repeat everything that you see in there. Likewise, if you click it another time, you now have three of those. That's how the duplicate section works. And then if you would like to stylize any of those sections, make sure that you have clicked on the section in question. The blue perimeter is going to show up. Right over here, there are section colors. I'm gonna click one time. And there are specific styles associated with the theme you have selected. Style one is traditionally the default, so style one is currently on display. In order to change from style one, that's when I would choose one of the adjacent style options. So let me scoot over here. Uh, you can either click on one item inside the section or you can click on the outermost portion so the perimeter appears. Google recognizes you're working with that section either way. I'm now gonna come down to style two and I would like that light green band to appear along that section. And then I'm gonna choose the third style in this section over here, style three. So if you ever need something to stand out for one reason or another, you can choose those options. In my opinion, I think a really light font color would work out really well as a contrast on this dark background. I'm gonna choose the button right here that says text color, and then I'm gonna choose white so that it overrides the color of the text in that section. Now you can see a much more vivid contrast between the white letters and the dark background. The next thing I want to show you is how to add an image. Let's scoot over to the right and click images. When you choose images, you have two options. You can either upload something from your computer or you can choose select. There are four areas to choose from, Google Drive, by URL, Google Image Search, and Photos. For this portion of the training, I'm going to choose Google Image Search. I'm gonna click right here where it says search for images. I'm then going to type in the word or phrase that represents my search query, and then I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard. Google is going to search through the internet, hopefully only finding images that are acceptable for me to use and are not copywritten uh, items. I'm gonna click right here on this Apple picture and after I click right here, I'm going to choose insert right over here. Google will deposit this into some random location here on my page. And then it's my job to click and scoot it into a position that I think is perfect. Again, please note that the item is going to be bound by those gray lines that we noticed earlier. You can readjust the size of the image if you choose. Simply use any of the bubbles around the perimeter of that image in order to find the size that you think is most perfect. Once you have snapped it into the perimeter shape that you think is best, there are a few other characteristics that you can choose from. 
This item on the left allows you to crop the image so you can adjust what portion of the image is on display. You also have the capacity to zoom in or zoom out using that feature as well. Once you are most satisfied with the image, choose the check mark on the right. You also have the capacity to choose uncrop. So if any aspect of the image has been cropped and you are dissatisfied that some of it has been trimmed off, you can do that as well. Item number three allows you to embed a link into this image so that if your audience clicks on it, they would be redirected to a specific location. In an adjacent tab, I opened up this item over here, directing my audience to a Sacktown Magazine, Sacramento, the ultimate guide to Apple Hill. So let's pretend that I want my audience to be redirected to this location. I'm gonna come up here in the Omni bar. I'm going to click one time. When you only click once, it illuminates the entire thing. If you click more than once, it does not. So let me try that again, click. I'm gonna right click one time. I'm going to copy that web link. Control C on your keyboard would achieve the same outcome. Gonna scoot back over to the tab that has my website. Going to scoot over here to the image. Let's pretend that I clicked away from it. Let me click one more time. That way I can see this toolbar up at the top. I'm gonna to click the link right here and it's going to ask for the web link. So I'm going to right click and paste, or you can use your keyboard control V for victory, either one is fine. And then I'm gonna choose the apply button one time. Now, when I choose the visibility feature and I'm pretending that I'm part of the viewing audience and I'm looking at the website, when you, watch, watch, did you see that? The arrow turned into a hand. The arrow turned into hand. The hand lets me know that I can click and something will happen. So when I click one time, you'll notice how this brand new tab was achieved. And inside of this brand new tab, it's going to take me to that resource that I hand selected because I wanted it to be clickable. You are not required at all to make sure that your images have a link embedded into them. However, if that's a feature that's important to you, then you would use that resource in order to do that. I'm gonna click the X to navigate away from the visibility feature. I'm back inside of the editor. If I would like to get rid of the link, I'm gonna click on the item one time and I'm gonna come right down here where I see the trash can in order to get rid of it. Or if I'm like, oops, that was the wrong web link, I can use the pencil in order to edit the web link. Up here, the web link editing tool has appeared. I can erase all of the text and then click apply after I've pasted the new link in there. My other option, let me click one more time. Instead of the pencil, I can use the trash can in order to remove that link. And now when I click on link, there's no link in there at all. My users will not be redirected to that alternative website any longer. I can click one time and I can use the trash can in order to get rid of the image. If I choose, some people call it a skinny snowman, dot, dot, dot. If I choose the more button located right here, there are a few additional features in here. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through the process of explaining all of this. I think that you have enough resources so far to navigate pictures just fine. There are additional videos in this series. Please join me for the next video.